So when Halo Infinite was first shown with gameplay and everything at Microsoft's event, there was a bit of a mixed reaction to it. I wasn't really sold completely on what they had shown there. I thought the gameplay looked pretty good. It looked like classic Halo, and I was on board for that. But the visuals, the presentation, there were a lot of things there that just didn't scream next generation to me. And it looked very unpolished from the visual style and like the environments and the pop in and all that. I don't know. It just didn't seem like this big budget game that cost like what $500 million, brand new engine, all this stuff. And it just, it looked like it was a game that wasn't actually ready to show yet, and it was supposed to be shipping this holiday next to the Series X. Well, it turns out, I guess that thought was correct, because they delayed it, of course, and now we're trying to figure out how long it's been delayed for. And the more time that piles up on this delay, the more pressure, I think, is on 343 and Halo Infinite to be very, very good. If it's not going to be there for the Series X launch and they're pushing it out, that means that it has to be that much better than what they had shown us. So we're going to talk about why at this point there is a rumor going around. Of course, the, these rumors blow up for Halo Infinite because there is a lot of interest and even concern for the game now with its delay. Uh, we're going to go over why it's also very possible that Microsoft could even drop the Xbox One version of this game. Guys, if you enjoy the video, make sure you drop a like on it on the way out. It does help out a lot. Let's go over here to Video Games Chronicle that did uh, kind of document everything that was mentioned here for Halo Infinite's new rumor that's uh, Halo Infinite could drop its Xbox One version. Now, this was claimed by apparently a verified insider on Reset Era, and uh, I, I don't know how they verify people or all of this. Uh, apparently, this person has been correct in the past. I think it was with uh, In Exile stuff, so, I mean, it depends on how connected, I guess, Microsoft's inner workings are with Halo Infinite and, like, you know, like, Wasteland or whatever else they're working on, things like that, uh, but... They have been correct in the past, so that's why people are paying attention to what they are saying here. And uh, they say, according to the Insider, developer 343 Industries is struggling to achieve performance above 900p on the oldest Xbox One S console, which has led it to consider making the shooter a next-gen-only title following its recent delay. Now, this is where Microsoft gets into kind of a, a, a rock and a hard place, technically, right? I mean... What do they do? What if it comes out and it's like 600p on the Xbox One VCR at 30 frames or something, right? And what if it's still dropping frames there? It's struggling badly. Should they still put it out for that kind of experience and spend the resources, energy, time, all on trying to make that version work when they could just drop it and focus more on the Series S that should be launching this holiday, we assume, and the Series X, especially if this game doesn't come out till the end of 2021. What if this game doesn't come out till 2022? Because that's also something that's being mentioned here by this uh, by this verified insider, is that it very well could actually even fall out of 2021. If we get into 2022, is anyone really still calling for an Xbox One version of this game. But keep in mind, Microsoft themselves said that this would be a game on all of their Xbox platforms, specifically going back to the original Xbox One and up. That's a lot of systems to develop for. The Xbox One VCR, the One S, the One X, the Series S, the Series X. Yeah, you throw all of that in the mix along with something like xCloud and then PC and really the, I guess, I guess the, the spreading of resources becomes very thin, right? Like trying to work on all these different configurations, that can be pretty tough if you think about, oh, what if they just focused right now on the Series X and the Series S along with PC, make that move to next gen for something that's supposed to work to push next gen and Game Pass, of course. That's probably the biggest reason, though, is, is they want Game Pass to continue being pushed. But eventually, people will leave that Xbox One behind. And does Halo, which is supposed to be this long project, it's a game that's going to be around for apparently up to a decade, is it worth putting it on a system that may only be relevant for like another six months after Halo Infinite drops? They say the current version of Halo Infinite on Xbox One S is nowhere near 1080p, even lower than 900p, and is having serious asset loading issues issues much worse than you have seen on PC demo. Now, of course, the Xbox One VCR and the One X and the One S, they're all using a standard mechanical hard drive, a 5400 RPM drive. 
it's pretty slow. And the idea of going to next gen is that you can leverage that SSD and much faster and instantaneous load times, right? So from what we saw during this demo, that was the biggest thing that stuck out to me. I was like, wow, we're still seeing some, some pop-ins. We're seeing level of detail pop in and change. That's very weird because the biggest push is for with their velocity architecture and all this. And they keep touting the SSD. And then we see that. And it was like, that just, it seems weird that that would happen. But we go back to that mechanical hard drive and it, it might be worse, as they're saying here. And they say the idea is to change the engine level, how assets load, make ray tracing as default, improve, unlock some assets, improve geometry, post-processing, and add more CPU-bound interactivity. The CPU on the Xbox One the One X, it's not good. It's the Jaguar processors. They're, they're just not, it's just not a good CPU, okay? It, it does struggle. That is the big weak point of current systems. And that's why there's so much excitement of going up to Zen 2. Yeah, even if it's Renoir, that's still significantly better than what we're dealing with right now in these systems. And take into account that Halo Infinite is supposed to be like a, a more open Halo, like more of an open world style then yes moving to that better cpu and not having to account for something like the jaguar cores would help them i would say quite a bit in development to make even a better game now they finish up saying it's pretty messy up there with decisions but they are convinced that they need to make the best halo game ever and yeah i i, I do feel that way as well i mean the amount of talk behind this game it being delayed everything like i said is piling up and stacking up with a lot of pressure behind this game. Halo is Microsoft's or the Xbox's biggest IP. It just straight up is. I know people are fans of like Gears or Forza. No, no. Halo has been there since the beginning for the Xbox, right? It's just you think of Halo, you think of Xbox. Sure, it's also going to be on PC, but still Halo is pretty much forever tied to the Xbox system itself. It represents it basically. So like for me, it has to be like this amazing game when it comes out especially like i said the amount of development time the new engine it literally being called halo infinite now right not like a number in this in the series any longer this has to be the definitive halo game like no questions asked now i think it's pretty obvious that things like covid19 hurt development in general like obviously going to remote work was a problem especially with how many developers were trying to get this game done they were calling in help from everywhere it sounded like all different studios were working to lend support to get halo infinite out but they just ran out of time it seems right and it's not necessarily the idea of having to drop the xbox one it does sound like development was kind of all over the place and this dates back to like last year even before remote work and all this stuff had to go into effect we had recorded a, a podcast a while ago me mvg and nate and i think it was right at the beginning of this year or like right at the end of last year and we had talked about how there were problems seemingly coming out of Halo Infinite at the time for development. And I will give MVG, MVG credit. He said himself that Halo Infinite, he did not think it was going to make this holiday. And I mean, Microsoft kept coming out with Phil Spencer saying holiday 2020 over and over and over again. And then they delay it here. So hey, MVG was right. It's it's hard to say how accurate this report is here, this rumor. But the reason it's catching, I think, so much heat online and so, so much interest right now is because we've seen 343 actually listen to the fans, the people who are going to be playing this game. And right now, there are a lot of people who are saying, yes, drop that Xbox One version, focus on the Series X and the Series S, because there is a chance that a year from now, maybe more, people won't even really be playing the Xbox One like that, right? Or they may have even moved to xCloud for some of their, some of their gaming at the time. So... I mean, if the Series S comes out and it is a $300 box and then maybe next holiday it's like on sale for 250 or something, that's a that's a pretty good entry point. Even better than now trying to get into next gen if you want something like uh upscaled 4K, right? So, I am currently right now on the side of drop the Xbox One version, focus on the Series X and the Series S, especially if it's not coming out till holiday next year. And just try to make the best Halo game you can. It's also going to be on PC. So if you're a PC gamer, you probably don't care either way. You're like, just get the game out, right? But I am very curious what you think about this situation. Because there are people who just have an Xbox One X. They're like, I want it to last like another two years. And then, then I'll look into the next systems. So maybe you do want Halo Infinite to stay kind of how it is now. Where it's going to be on the Xbox One and the Series X and S systems. Let me know where you fall on this situation. Because it's very clear that 343 is listening. So... I would, uh, I would let your voices be heard there either way. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.